we already know that high blood sugars are the leading cause of diabetes complications. But what if I told you that low blood sugars matter too? In this video, I'm gonna tell you what recent research says about low blood sugars and your long-term health. This research includes your brain and your eyes. First, what is a diabetes complication? Well, let's just get to this really quickly. There are multiple diabetes complications, which means basically diabetes caused things like diabetic eye disease or diabetic retinopathy, diabetic kidney disease, also known as nephropathy, diabetic neuropathy, which is in your fingers and toes, gastroparesis, which is the nerves in your gut and the lining of your gut. Those are the big ones, okay? your eyes, your fingers, your toes, your kidneys, and your legs in general, and then your gut. Traditionally, we're told that high blood sugars are the primary cause of diabetes complications. Here's why. When your blood sugars are high, all that sugar can really damage the nerves and blood vessels throughout every part of your body, particularly, you know, your eyes, your fingers, your toes, your kidneys, etc. That's why it's so important that we do our best to keep our blood sugars down in a safe range to protect the many different parts of our body that are affected by high blood sugar. That fear of complications can actually drive some people to run their blood sugars too low. So they're experiencing severe hypoglycemia on a regular basis. I know some of these people, I have met people over the years who purposefully run their blood sugar so low that they are having multiple trips every year to the emergency room because they're losing consciousness or having seizures. And this is probably motivated by that fear of developing diabetes complications. But here's what the research says about low blood sugars and the impact they have on your long-term health. First, your brain. Frequent hypoglycemia can actually increase your risk of developing dementia and memory loss. Your brain functions on a second by second delivery of glucose. So imagine how much it suffers every time you have a low blood sugar, especially severe low blood sugars. Research says that severe hypoglycemia can actually damage brain cells. When your blood sugar is really low, the cells in your brain are deprived of the sugar that they need to thrive. The research says this leads to damage of the neurons in your brain and it's potentially changing the structure of your brain cells. Now for your eyes. We have been told over and over as people with diabetes that high blood sugars damage our eyes and increase our risk of diabetic retinopathy. Basically all that excess glucose is in the back of your eye damaging the nerves and the blood vessels and the cells. Recent research says that frequent severe low blood sugars can actually increase your risk of diabetic retinopathy. And if you've already been diagnosed with retinopathy, those low blood sugars can worsen your existing retinopathy. How, how is that possible? I thought the damage was caused by all the excess sugar. Okay, apparently there's two ways that low blood sugars can damage the health of your eyes. The first is that low blood sugars actually break down what's called the blood retinal barrier, a barrier in your eyes that protects your retina. Okay, so low blood sugars can also increase levels of HIF, a protein that does play a role in the development of abnormal blood vessels in your eyes. When you have diabetic retinopathy, your, your blood vessels are struggling and dying off, right? And your eyes try to produce new blood vessels. Well, unfortunately, those new blood vessels are often abnormal, which means they're leaky. They're leaking blood and other fluid, and that's not good. So low blood sugars are increasing a protein that's linked to the development of those abnormal blood vessels. So the study also says that this might explain why some people with diabetes who have really tight blood sugar management actually still have this risk of developing diabetic retinopathy. Because generally speaking, the tighter your blood sugar management is, the more lows you're having. And now we know that lows do play a role in the development of those abnormal blood vessels. The same researchers are developing a drug that hopes to block the production of HIF so that they can protect our eyes from that protein, even if we're experiencing a lot of lows 
and not just the highs that we already thought were the culprits of diabetic retinopathy. Mm, so what does this all mean if you live with diabetes? It kind of feels like you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. It means we do need to take low blood sugars seriously. Frequent lows are just as dangerous for our long-term health as frequent highs. If you are someone who's gotten used to having a lot of low blood sugars because you're trying so hard to manage your blood sugars so tightly, it might be time to step back. That middle ground of, you know, not so perfect might really be better for your long-term health. But frequent lows mean one really obvious thing. It means you're getting too much insulin. The hard part is figuring out when you're getting too much insulin and how to adjust your insulin doses so that you're not going low all the time, but you're not going high either. Managing and adjusting insulin is not easy. It takes years to learn how to study your own insulin doses. The first thing to do though is tell your healthcare team, hey, I'm having a lot of lows. I wanna prevent these lows. You've gotta learn how to fine tune your insulin doses. If you're having a lot of lows, it means your doses are not matching your body's needs. I know that sounds, you know, very simplified, but it is just basically where you've got to start. It's a fact. A lot of lows means you're getting too much insulin at some point in your day. But I've got a little secret for you. A lot of lows can also mean, if you're on a roller coaster all the time, that you're not getting enough background insulin and you're trying to compensate for that lack of background insulin by constantly taking more correction doses. So if you're having a lot of lows, but you're on a roller coaster with a lot of highs, I would take a look first at your long acting or basal rate doses in your pump. If you don't have a healthcare team you can lean on, I highly recommend my friend Ben Zeal at yourdiabetesinsider.com. Ben did not pay me to recommend him. I just know he can help you if you have not learned how to fine tune your insulin doses on your own, and if you don't have a healthcare team that you feel like you can go to for real help. 